You know, the forced marriage and child marriage just crosses into the issue that I've been working on, which is maternal, improving maternal health and reducing maternal mortality globally. Um, you know, the more that I get engaged into the issue that I'm involved in, the more I see that the numbers or the most vulnerable mothers are in fact adolescent girls. And so when you look at um, an issue like forced marriage and child marriage and you see the organizations that are kind of coming together to, to sort of bring that up on the agenda, it just cuts across it in such a way that it makes it more, uh, it just makes the partnership opportunities that much more um, available and, um, and it's a great way to, um, to actually prevent maternal mortality because if we can, you know, if we can get girls to um, be girls mm -hmm. as long as possible then we can delay um, early marriage and first pregnancies and a lot of the ongoing um, health implications of those practices. Well, culture does play a role. I mean, I made a documentary film called No Woman, No Cry, and, um, you know, in some of the countries where we filmed, um, you know, oh, actually in all of the cultures, all of the countries we filmed, culture played a role. Um, and examining that, um, examining barriers, uh, or what are perceived as barriers, but also seeing, as, as the hero of the Trust Women Conference just mentioned, that sometimes those barriers can also be, um, you know, tremendous advocates in and of themselves if they're given the support and the information that they need to um, communicate information that is that is more positive and changing for their community. Um, so I feel like culture is sometimes a barrier, but at the same time, there's so much um, there's still so much opportunity, and behavior change is something that I think every culture can you know can relate to and can understand um, that behavior change for any of us is is a difficult thing and it can take time. Um, not impossible. I think um, healthy and, and positive role modeling can be incredibly impactful and we're seeing that in a number of organizations that are working on the ground in a number of countries where there are more sort of obvious harmful um, practices going on and that, that they are going on because the, of cultural um, tradition. Um, so there, there are a number of positive ways to work within the, the context and the confines of, of those cultural norms. Well, I, I actually was inspired to make No Woman, No Cry because of that deadline that was approaching already in 2007 when I decided to make the film and in 2008 when I started to make the film. Um, I rushed to have the film made so that um, and completed in 2010 because I saw that there was a big opportunity to make an impact for these five years. And then I created an organization called Every Mother Counts to further, um, you know, advocate and make some noise on, on the issue of maternal health because it was lagging so much. Mm -hmm. Now that we're so close um, and you realize how quickly time goes mm -hmm. by um, and you realize how long it does actually take to, to make real change, you know, the numbers are finally coming down globally with maternal mortality, not in every country, um, but there have been improvements. You know, in Bangladesh where we filmed, there's been a 40% reduction of maternal mortality and I don't think that we talk enough about the successes and where they're happening and learn from the successes and to understand that that took maybe two, it took a, definitely a generation, maybe two, to really come to that place. Um, and so not to say that we can't make short-term, um, you know, strides, but that these are our long-term um, goals. And yet I think the MDGs were incredibly powerful because they were the first time that we unified these these goals um, and I think all of us are on the same page with wanting to figure out how to sustain them how to you know how to continue to move that energy that has really been positive momentum I think um, to keep that going forward I mean I don't think anybody expects they're gonna go home and retire in 2015 <laughs> One idea that came up in, in the forced marriage, um, child marriage panel that we were just in was the idea of bringing adolescent girls and their health, that sort of, you know, you know there's a very clear definition of, of you know, what infant mortality is and, and child mortality, but there really is a, a very large gap between the five-year-old and, and, you know, the 18-year-old. Um, so I think to have more of a focus on, on the health of the adolescent girl would be, um, would be I think, a great, um, a great move in the right direction. 
I do believe that it's a woman's right to have control over her, her body. And the fact that the MDG-5 has been divided into A and B has always felt a disservice um, to the ultimate goal. And maybe that's why um, there hasn't been the momentum or the real progress, because it's, it's, it's fragmented. Um, and I think there, there has been a lot more sort of um, consensus on, on family planning. There's been a lot more you know, global um, sort of leadership on that. And I think that's, that's a positive indication that we can move the dial there. Um, but yeah, I mean, consensus is important really to, to, to make real lasting change. But it doesn't mean that we can't make progress. Um, I think we have to continue to fight towards that and, and, and I think we'll get there.